Good morning, good afternoon or good evening, whatever time you're watching this. If you're watching this, hello. Uh, I'm Dave and I find myself in Chester with a couple of hours to spare. So I thought I'd come down and make a little video. Why not? Um, we'll give you some history, we'll have a little walk around. I do apologise about the wind, it's not too distracting. Um, and we'll just have a little mooch about Chester and we'll see what's what. And I'll tell you what I know, or what I think I know. And um, you're more than welcome to correct me in the comments. But if you do correct me in the comments, please, I just ask you to cite your source so I can go and have a little look myself. Um, right, okay, let's get to it. So this is Chester Castle, uh, built by William the Conqueror during the no uh, well after the Norman invasion, and it was one of Chester was one of the last places to fall to the Normans according to sources I've read there. Um, so held out for a good while. If you're unsure where Chester is, if you've never heard of it, if you're overseas watching elsewhere, it's in the northwest county of Cheshire in England. Um, very, very close to Wales. In fact, Wales is about five minutes that way. So there you go, it's in Cheshire. And we're up on the walls of the city, just having a little mooch. And I thought, you know what, I'll give you some history of the place. So it was founded in AD 79 or 79 CE, whatever you want to say, however you want to put it, it's up to you, um, as a Roman castrum or a Roman fort. Uh, it was originally called uh, Deva Victrix uh, because of the legion that was stationed. So it's Deva because of the River Dee there. And Victrix was the name of the, the legion that was stationed here. So it was uh, the 20th legion, Legio, which is legion, uh, Valeria Victrix. So that's where Deva Victrix comes from. Um, yeah. So, Diva Victrix became the largest fort in Northern England. Um, it was used as a jump off point for, uh, for the soldiers to push further north. Um, and over time, a massive civilian settlement rose up around the camp, around the fort. And uh, it, people just started to settle. You know, you'd have had blacksmiths, you'd have had farriers, you'd have had. Uh, Fletchers for arrows and coopers for barrels and all kinds of trades going on. Um, and <clears throat> the, the, the settlement just grew. And as if we needed any proof that Chester has found a, a Roman town. Um, just behind me as I'm walking along the wall there's a, a group of school kids reenacting a battle with uh, gladius swords and shields. I'm not going to film them obviously. But yeah, must be a little school out. And, and um, it's like they're having a ball. So here I am on top of uh, Newgate, and this is the most recent addition. It dates from about the 12th century. Um, and there, I don't know if you can see that. I don't know if you can tell what that might be. That's a Roman amphitheatre. That's right, a Roman amphitheatre. Best preserved in the country, I believe. I'm not entirely sure. But we'll go down and have a look. So we're off the walls now. I was stood just up there on top of Newgate, uh, looking down onto the amphitheatre, which we're going to have a look at now. We'll just get this sign. And that's what it potentially might have looked like. Um, it's saying here uh, it was built not long after 80 AD. And apparently this amphitheatre could see 80,000 people, uh, sorry, eight, not 80, 8,000 people. And it's, it's, it's really impressive actually. I mean, it's really well preserved. Uh, I believe it's the, one of the best, if not the best preserved in Britain. I mean, it's been raining, so, you know, excuse that. But if you could just picture it for a minute, 8,000 people sat in here enjoying games or you know entertainment um, 
I'm not entirely sure if they did executions here. I don't actually know. But, you know, for 2,000 years ago, to be able to build something to seat and entertain 8,000 people, that's impressive. Um, you know, and when you think of the likes of the places like the Colosseum in Rome, it just, it makes it all the more impressive. But yes, there is an amphitheatre in Chester. Roman amphitheatre in Chester, if you please. Um, go and have a little look over here, see what's... There's bits and bobs down there. Oh, uh, and I mean, for someone like me, I'm fascinated by Roman history and all that kind of stuff. So to have this here is, is you know, I, I love it. I love it. Um, and if you've never been to Chester, it's definitely worth a visit. Absolutely worth a visit. But yes, a Roman amphitheatre right in the middle of Chester. Well, we're just actually outside the old city. There's the city walls. Um, Newgate. New Apparently it was known as Wolf's Gate at one time. Um, but yeah, a Roman amphitheatre. How about that? Amazing. What's this sign saying? Let's have a look. Stairway to seating of Amphitheatre 2. Replica. I'm sure it is. But even so, you know, just try and just let your imagination wander for a minute. 8,000 people sat in here cheering or booing, maybe, if they didn't like the entertainment. But yeah, that's the amphitheatre. We've seen it now. We'll move on. And there is Roman gardens in Chester as well. But as I said, there's a school activity going on. So I'm not going to film in there. We'll leave that one today. So Chester is a walled city and all over, all along the walls there's these little doorways with stairways inside to get up to the, up on top of the walls. Yep, they're everywhere. There we go. City walls where soldiers patrolled, tolls were taken and the people were pre-mandated. Prom oh, um, and the people promenaded. I can't read. But yep, yeah, and that's where we are, Newgate. So we'll move on. When the Romans took off in the late 4th century, a lot of Roman soldiers and dignitaries and, and citizens stayed. Um, and Chester began to grow. And it, it still, it, it grew and it grew and it got bigger and bigger and larger and more important. To the point where they thought it was going to be the capital of, um, of Britannia. So um, we could have... We could have beat London, well, Chester could have beat London, um, to the capital of Britannia. And I don't know if we're coming to the end here now of where I can walk. Timeline City Chester Walls Project. Hmm. Oh no, we're still moving. So I'm currently stood on top of East Gate, which is the oldest entrance into the city. This route has been the primary route for over for nearly 2,000 years into the city and it's still really busy leads to all the shops and you can hear someone singing away there but yeah I hope this stuff I really hope this wind still isn't too bad yeah there you go Eastgate There you go, music as well. And just in case you forget where you were, they've put this really helpful, really big sign outside the cathedral, Chester. So Chester became part of the Kingdom of Powys after the Romans left. And in 616, King Aethelfrith of Northumbria beat the Welsh army at the bloody Battle of Chester. So this is Chester Cathedral. Um, founded by King Aethelred of Mercia in 689 as the Minster Church of West Mercia. Finally got it right. 
and uh, there's been a site of worship here ever since. Um, it's been an abbey, it's been, and now it's a cathedral. We, we're gonna go in and have a little look inside. I have been given permission to film, so let's go. Okay, so I'm not gonna do too much talking inside because, you know, keep it respectful. So here we are, in Chester Cathedral. Um, I'm not gonna do a lot of talking. Um, they're just taking all the Christmas stuff down. Um, let's see if we can get a little look at this cloister. Mm, that's very nice. Um, so yeah, we're in one of the corridors surrounding the cloister. We'll go into the main church in a minute. I won't be speaking because, you know, a church. So, let's go and have a look. This looks like some kind of meeting chamber, doesn't it? Um, whoever, big guy in the seat there, and then maybe church councillors or parish council, maybe. I'm not sure what this is all about. The seat on the edge. Oh, here we go, consistory court. In this court, 400 years ago, Elena Harrison was accused of stealing cheese from her neighbour's cud. Oh. So it was a court. A consistory court. Mm. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. I've seen something interesting down here. Let's go and have a look. I think I've got some time to kill, so I thought, why not? It's brilliant, that, don't it? If you basically just take a photograph of me, so if I give you my phone, you take a photograph of me, would that be fair? Of course I will, mate, of course I will. So that, that guy was nice, here on a little day out with his son. Um, asked me to get a picture, and then he he saw the camera that I'm filming on, the pocket too, and he was he was impressed. Oh, we've got a tomb here. Who's this? The Duke of Westminster. Parliament of Chester. Mm, it's a memorial. 
very nice. Yeah, I do like this cathedral though, it's, it's lovely. Let's get a shot of that window. Mm. So, yeah, oh, look at the organ there. Quite big, quite a big organ. <coughs> Pure oil, stop it. And there's more little bits and bobs in here. I don't know if we're allowed that here, but we're going to go until we're told not to. A lot of plaques and things on the walls, sacred memory of Maria Georgina. When we come into this bit. And uh, I used to be really quite conscious of filming in public and speaking, but now it's not so bad. best not to get people into the, the shot sometimes it can't be helped and, uh, we'll just get a, a look at the ceiling before we go That's the cathedral. Lovely place. Let's go and see what else we can see. Yeah, you can see they're just getting the uh, Christmas tree down, getting rid of all that. And let's head out. Ah, oh, how lovely in there. Whoa, jeez. Need to sort your ISO out, Dave. Can't do it while I'm recording. Hang on. Okay, we're back. Hello. Let's go down here and see what we can see. More of the cathedral. But well, I think we've done that now. Let's move on. I think I've actually gone the wrong way. So yeah, Chester's full of little eateries and little alleyways and yeah, it's nice just to come and have a wander about. Um <clears throat> okay, so I I'll tell you what. Let's go and get a coffee and I'll talk about those kingdoms I mentioned before. Powers, Mercia and Northumbria. Let's uh, let's go and have a little chat about that. Okay, caffeine acquired. Um, I've come down to the river to talk about those words I was saying earlier on. Powers, Northumbria, Mercia. What were they? When the Romans left, uh, the Anglo-Saxons came up in England. And they split into what were called petty kingdoms. So Northumbria was a petty kingdom, and that was up in up Newcastle Way, Durham, Middlesbrough, or around that way. Um, the three big ones were Northumbria, as I just said, Mercia, which was Midlands, Birmingham, and then you've got Wessex, 
down on the west coast, kind of between Cornwall and Kent. So they were the three major kingdoms in England. There was what, kingdoms in Wales as well, Powys, Gwynedd, Gwyneth, sorry. Um, I'm pretty sure Shrewsbury was part of Wales as well. There was a, a couple of, there was, there was more smaller ones. There was an interesting one called the Hwissa, which was round Gloucester. Gloucestershire around that way, and I'm pretty sure Kent, Sussex and Middlesex had their own as well. But they were ruled by petty kings or chieftains. And that's what I was on about when I was talking about Mercia, King Ethelred, Northumbria, King Ethelfrith, Wales becoming part of Powys. That's what I was referring to, is the petty kingdoms of the Anglo-Saxons. So there you go. If you didn't know, now you do, and if you did, well, hopefully I got that right. As always, though, feel free to correct me in the comments, but as I said earlier, please, please, I would ask you just to cite a source so I can go and read it myself. Because, oh, you know, always up to improve knowledge. Oh, it's got to be done. So Chester's also a massive university town. And there's one of the campuses there. Um, I won't film too much, but yeah. Lots of students in Chester. A few minutes before I got down to the river, where I told you about where the, the kingdoms, the Anglo-Saxons, um, <clears throat> someone walked past me in full Roman centurion outfit, skirt and everything. He must have been freezing. Um, unfortunately, I was fumbling with me with me coffee, uh, a, a pasty, and me camera at the time, so I couldn't get him. I really wanted to, and I tried, but I couldn't get him. That would have been perfect. Still, never mind. Thinking about it, he might have been a legionary. Either way, he was in full Roman soldier gear. I was impressed, but I couldn't catch him on camera. I don't know if you can hear that, but uh, singing going on. Wow. Must be the uh, College of Arts, maybe, or drama. Very nice, though. Okay, so the weather now, it's on the turn big time, but I just wanted to show you Chester race course quickly. I apologize for the wind and the rain, it's horrible. Um, but this, it's a tiny, tiny race course, it only goes across the back there, round, and I'm back along. Uh, but part of it is actually bordered by an actual Roman wall. Um, these HQ buildings were where Roman elite had their houses. We've got the castle and the courts and the assizes just back there. And I'm going to get out this rain because... One last thing, a lot of the shops in Chester are up set up off the street up steps Look. so these are the roads and I've not seen this set up anywhere else outside Chester um, shops under covered walkways they're really nice um, but yeah as I say I've not seen these anywhere and one thing about Chester is you're gonna have to get used to climbing steps because they're everywhere up to the shops, up to the walls. There's more there, look. They are everywhere. So if you're no good with steps, it might be a problem. Um, but yeah, that's the rose. How steep are they? Oh, you break your neck if you weren't careful. It does smell nice though. That might be the shops. But, um, yeah, oh, hello. Looks very nice. Right, let's jump down here. Oh, try not to break my neck. Made it. Okay, so you'd be forgiven for thinking as well that these black and white buildings up here, the tops, were actually Judah. Um, they're not. They were put up in the Victorian times, 19th century, as part of the black and white revivalist movement. So, there you go. A little bit of information on that. And I've um, 
I've enjoyed making this video, I was a bit nervous about filming in public, but no one seems to care, so that's okay, that's fine by me. Now I just need to find the car park and get out of this weather. Um, well, that was Chester. Started in 79 AD as a Roman army camp called Diva Victrix after the Legion. Then in Anglo Saxon times it was known as Diva because of the River Dee, I'm assuming. Then Old English became. Um, oh, oh, hang on. Look at this. We got him. There's our Roman soldier. What a way to end it. Fantastic. Right. I'm going to get out this rain. But just before I go, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you've been at least a little bit entertained. Um, and if you want more of this kind of stuff, let me know. And if you want need, if you want to correct anything I've said in the comments, obviously do so. I'm happy for you to do that. Um, whew, I'm getting out of breath. This wind. But if you do, please cite your source, just so I can go and have a read. Not because I disbelieve you, or I think you, you know, anything other than telling the truth. Just so I can go and have a read myself. Okay, I'm gonna go and find a car, find my way home. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.